Alright guys, so one of the videos that kind of put us on the map is WD and and uh, actually I think it's like our third biggest video ever was this 1974 Corvette Stingray that is actually my uncle's and uh, they dragged it out of a barn where it had been sitting for 15 years. It was covered in dust and dirt and uh, we cleaned it up for a video. The video exploded and uh, he was only supposed to leave it at my garage for like two or three months and unfortunately it's been here for the last two years. But we figured uh, since we have our new shop, it'd be a great car to, to christen the new shop in because as you can see, over the last two years it sat outside for a little bit. It has leaves all over, cat paw prints. Um, it really is a shame that we cleaned it up so nice and it looks like this again. But in that last video, we didn't do the interior and we're gonna do the interior on this video. Give you guys a full layout of what it looks like on these 1974 Stingrays. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. So the first thing we did was take it out of the garage and get it up on our trailer. And what do you know, we ran into our first problem, which were these tailpipe extensions. And due to popular demand on the original video, we actually took them off because a lot of you said they were ugly and we agree. Now with the car in some decent lighting, as you guys can see, it's really dirty from sitting outside and then in the garage for the last two years. But I want to ask you a question, so leave your answers in the comments below. As RJ mentioned, we do have a new shop finally. We're not in that parking garage anymore that you've seen us build the channel on for the last two years, which is kind of sad. But our shop's not 100% done yet. And when it is, would you guys like to see a full tour of it? We have a lot of cool stuff planned for it. We've already done a lot to it. So let us know if that's something you want to see. Moving on to the engine bay, we weren't too worried about covering anything up like the air intake because this engine is actually seized and it either needs to be rebuilt or replaced. And if you guys were to replace this engine, comment below what you'd replace it with. And now a word from our sponsors. Hey guys, we just wanted to take one minute away from the detail to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Now, if you haven't heard of Skillshare before, it's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning new things or mastering old ones in their free time. Personally, I was super excited to take these classes taught by Marquez Brownlee on how to better our YouTube content, build our channel, edit our videos better, and most of all, make the best videos that we possibly can. Because if you 
you know me, you know I take a lot of pride in my work and I wanna continue striving and get better and better with every video that we put out. So if there's something that you've been putting off for quite a while, what better time to do it than now with Skillshare? So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and the first 1,000 people to use our code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So with that being said, thank you to Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. We really appreciate you guys and let's hop back in the detail. So moving on to the polishing step, we did a two-step correction on this paint, and we always get questions both in our comments and in our Instagram asking what we do when we do a paint correction. So I'm gonna let you guys know what we did for this case specifically, because as you'll probably already know, every single car, every kind of paint is gonna be different. But for this car, we used a microfiber cutting pad in Meguiar's M100 or Oberk Supreme Cut to remove the deep scratches and etchings. And then we finished with an Oberk red polishing pad and Oberk Supreme finish to remove the DA haze and improve clarity. So if you guys were curious how we got this amazing result that you're seeing right here, that's how we did it.
And by the way, I cut out a significant amount of footage and also sped it up a lot. So just so you guys are aware, we're blowing out the pad in between every single section, but obviously I'm not showing that because it would make the video take a lot longer. Now with the exterior of the car finished, it was time to move on to the inside. So the first thing we did was take the T-tops off so we could get more light inside the car and have more room to work with. And we got to do some tint removal on the back window for the first time in a video. So that was also fun to do. Now don't ask me why because I can't give you a real answer other than just speculating but this car had front mats from a Saturn in it and the only reason I could even imagine that it would have those is because they're the only thing that would fit in it that weren't the original Corvette ones. So we did end up cleaning them and putting them back in the car for the time being but I would assume whoever ends up owning this car would buy new ones for the Corvette. And as we started vacuuming check out what we found right there an extra key. Um, it actually worked and it just so happened to be underneath the seat, so you never know what you're going to find. Okay, so this car had a very, very strong, horrible smell of rat urine. And this is something that our friend Jason Kilmer showed us. It's a product called Unchained, which is a stain and odor remover. So we use it as a pre-treatment on carpets now, and we just spray it all over the carpets and let it sit while we do the rest of the car. And then when we come back and we extract it, we pull it out and it smells amazing.
Okay, so this carpet was a perfect example of why you can't always use a drill brush on every single detail when you're extracting. So if you look right in the passenger's floor well, you can see the carpet was beginning to rip. And after sitting for a long time, when these carpets get really old, you don't want to risk damaging them even more with the drill brush. So we had to be very careful with the extractor by just spraying on our solution and sucking it all away. We didn't want to do anything more aggressive than that. The last thing I want to say is if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and also subscribe to the channel because that helps us a lot. We have some crazy videos coming the next few weeks for you. I can promise you that and you don't want to miss them. So make sure you subscribe.